racing fan, Monday Morning Racer here. We've got another Drag TV interview brought to you by strutmasters.com, all while we're under lockdown. And this time, we're speaking with another strutmasters.com driver out of the pro stock ranks. We've got Bo Butner. Bo, look, hope you're doing well. Let me ask first off, looking over your career in pro stock, you have had some cool-looking hot rods from the Trans Am looking car to the General Lee, the Ricky Bobby Wonderbed look like car. Look, has Chip given you room with what is a beautiful paint scheme right, right now that you can, uh, well, flare things up through the season and have some other themed out cars with Strutmasters on board? Well, first of all, Lee, it's good to see you. And uh, we're definitely in a different world. Maybe it'll be like this for a long time. Who knows? But I'm still glad to see you and be able to do interviews. I used to see you one-on-one -on -one at the track, and it was cool. But as far as the uh, as far as the, the Halloween goes, that Rainy Land's huge about, uh, we are working on something, and Strut Masters will be included. He will be part of it. He will sign off on it to make sure he likes it. But I'm actually going to talk to to, to Chip about actually showing up and dressing him up to be a part of the part of the whole deal. So it's fun for everybody. It's some of the fan favorite. I mean, it, it started as the General Lee, something small, and it's gotten bigger and bigger, and other teams are doing it. And uh, I think MHR gets a lot of feedback from it. Now, I haven't gotten any trouble from, like, Burt Reynolds or the uh, – the, the, shoot, what was the last one? Uh, Back to the Future. I haven't had no issues. And that, that scared me a little bit, but it, it's been fun. The fans love it. Uh, but I'm running out of cool, iconic cars, you know what I mean? Because it's all about cars. And uh, I've got something in mind this year that might not be so much car-related, but it's definitely related to uh, maybe the guy standing behind me. All right, cool, man. I'm glad to hear there will still be some special wraps on the car. I personally would like to see a start ski and Hutch Pro Stock. I think that would be pretty awesome. So we, I'll work yeah, that into we, it. We, we, we discussed that, but Randy Lynn's all about having enough characters around the car so uh now something we're trying and you know we're hoping nhra is getting back on board and getting our schedule back and getting it straightened out but for the u.s nationals this year we are considering doing a throwback race with all the pro stock cars i'm a big fan of bob glidden bob glidden was in, in our lives and he's from indiana uh, he was one of the first phone calls i got in 17 when i won the championship and that's one of the only messages i have not deleted off my phone so I still have that message from Bob, but uh, he was one of the best, the hardest worker. Uh, so we're thinking about uh, working with Woody at Jigs and uh, the guys from Summit. We're all working on maybe doing throwback cars just for the U.S. Nationals. And I think that, that would be cool, but, you know, we got to keep our fans entertained, and we still want new fans. So it's, uh, it's, it's a big balance, but it, it, make, it makes racing fun. It definitely does, man. I mean, NASCAR, with the Southern 500, they've made that weekend the past several years the throwback weekend for NASCAR. And it's one of the prime events in NASCAR right now, not just because it's the prestigious Southern 500, but it's a look back into the sport. And as rich as drag racing is, with all its characters, with all its flair of the looks of the cars and iconic machines, yes, something should happen, I think, even every year throughout the classes that the throwback wraps come out and people can experience them. So that's cool to hear Pro Stock's possibly going to have that at the U.S. Nationals. Now, speaking of interactive, Ship Lofton is probably one of the most, if not the most, interactive sponsor out there to all the racers with his name being on so many cars on the side of your door this year in 2020. Look, how did you meet Ship? How did it all, how did it work out? It actually, uh, was getting some Facebook messaging from Chip at the end of last year, probably November, December range. Uh, I really don't know how it happened because I've, I've been approached and I have some smaller sponsors and I've always had our dealership and my father's name on the side of every car I've ever raced. So it was big for me and it wasn't so much the money aspect for me, but getting to know and doing a little research on Chip and seeing that, yeah, he's really out here trying to help a lot of other racers. I mean, a lot of racers that actually need the help that it takes takes every penny to get out here and do what, what they do. But he's picked out a pretty good group, in my opinion, of people that will uh, help him get his, keep his name out. But what's cool about him is the way he enjoys to be there, 
Uh, he'll help push a car. I mean, there's, I mean, he'll probably help rebuild a car. I mean, I'm, I'm not real sure, but uh, it's great to have him. He sits on our golf cart when we're pulling up the lanes, and he's just a great guy, and dude, he loves racing. He loves cars, and uh, you have to have that combination. We're very fortunate to have him, and I'm happy and hope it goes many years and can bring him in to do more. Now, Chip's obviously a savvy businessman to get where he's got with Strut Masters, but you're a businessman as well. You've got your hands into many things, and several irons are hot. You know, right now during this lockdown, the irons might be cooling a bit. But look, fill us in. What are your properties, and what do you have going on as far as business? Our, our main business is what my father started in 1955, is, is a used car lot. Well, then we, he started back in 55 of what they call a buy here, pay here lot to where we do all in-house financing. So I have the dealership and I have a finance company. Well, it got, it's, it's been great and we've been very blessed for it. But uh, we have a good group of local customers that we, we treat them as family. We feel like they are a family. I mean, they come in and I mean, I keep our championship trophy right there in the lobby. They'll come in and take pictures with it. They come in and they'll let me know, hey dude, she got you on the tree, if you know who she is. I mean, I, I hear a lot of stuff from them, and they're the first ones there. But it's cool to hear, and I wish NHRA and I, I've told them, they need to know their customer. And uh, when they cut back maybe on some of the television and pro stock, I've got my customers coming in, repeating to me, like, there's no sense in us even watching anymore. They, they want the whole entertainment aspect. They want to know somebody. And and that's, that's the part that I, I wish they would get. And... Uh, don't get me wrong, I get along good with the NHRA folks, get along with Todd, everybody that directs everything at Fox, the good, the workers, but they, there's time for something new. And I believe this time in life is something like the good Lord above has pushed the reset button. Everything, everybody's at home. Look, you're getting everything done at home. I know you are, that, that needed to be done. I've been in my race shop now for a week, cleaning stuff out and looking at stuff I didn't even know I had. So we're getting a lot of stuff done, but when all this is over, it's time for a reset. Maybe everybody lives to their means. Maybe everybody, you, you don't overspend. I mean, a lot of stuff's going to change, and but the race fan will never change. Definitely, man. I've been even, even able to wash my dishes. It's been a change yeah. of pace. It's definitely been a good deal that it's not full in the kitchen. Now, there's also been change of pace for you in business. Look, what are some things with the coronavirus implications that you have had to implement for selling cars for your employees and flew us in what are you attempting to do to help the community well of course you hear all this happening we leave Gainesville uh, we have a we have a place in South Florida so Randy Lynn and I just drove down there figuring this might be over in a few days so we'll just hold it out and come back to Gainesville in a couple of weeks and every life will be great well then as a week turned into a week and a half and then and then our county here decided that you know, the car sales part of my business was not essential. So I got thinking instantly, holy cow. I mean, never had to lay anybody off. And uh, that was instantly first thing. So I call a big meeting from the phone. I tell my son, get everybody together. I'm going to have to do something I don't want to. Well, as I thought about that, between that and the phone call, uh, I did some numbers and running and uh, our finance company still takes in payments every week. So I said, I can't make a decision. You can't react. That's my biggest problem in life learning not to react, think things out and get some help. So as, we're, as it's working out, and I believe God has, has, a, has a reason for everything. And so I've been able to keep everybody whole. I'm not cut, cutting their pay. Uh, I have cut hours. We're doing no, no uh, customer to, to employee contact whatsoever. So we've always had a, an, an internet-based payment program or a drop box or something where that happens. The sales part is what was funny. We've never really had to do online sales. We are capable. We use a docky sign, so nobody has to actually ever come in and sign anything. But I was scared. Most customers want to drive or test drive or look at a car. So I'm like, this will never work. Well, believe it or not, we're averaging about two cars a day, sold online, no test drives. We do the paperwork. The customer rolls in, hops in their car, and they're ready to go. So it's, it's a whole new, a whole new world. And that's why I've been telling my son, I can't believe that. I mean, I'm, I've, I've grew up in this my whole life and you had to touch every car before you bought it. You know I mean, you, you can't trust anybody or anything, but so we're, we're giving them a, a, a service agreement, which is kind of like a warranty, we're giving that with every car to reassure that I'm not going to sell them something. 
that that's going to break down or not going to take care of them. Uh, with all the ex existing customers, we have right around 1,800 customers that come in, and I've uh, as long as they are, are still working, and but they still need some money or to live on. I mean, everything's changed. We're giving them a little grace period. People that have lost their jobs, I'm not repossessing any cars. I mean, because we, that's unfortunately that's a part of our business, but. Anybody that's attempting or keeps in contact with us, we're not having any issues. Uh, insurance companies are giving them grace periods. I mean, the, if you really look, the whole world is trying to work together. And that has not happened in a long, long time. And like I say, this is a huge reset button. So we're staying open. Uh, of course, we don't know how long you can without making some cuts and changes. Uh, my whole race team, they're all still whole. And they're over there working in the shop every day. Like I say, we're getting a lot of stuff done that needs to be done. Uh, but as, as far as we, I want to do some other stuff, we're sitting and watching some shows, and I put a post out last week about, you know, we have, I have a couple semi-trucks. Uh, right up the road 100 miles from me, you have all the pro teams, Schumacher and everybody, they all have trucks sitting there. Well, then I hear all these complaints about there's a lot of supplies that need, need, need to be met. They need to be delivered. Well, if it's a deal to where we can set up and I actually have a call in with our Indiana governor tomorrow, I'm going to put my two guys, even myself in a truck, as long as we can go hook up to a trailer, take it and drop it. And we don't have to interact because I don't want to put anybody in and we don't need to be out in this mess. I understand that, but there are needs for us. There are needs. There's no sense in our truck sitting there because you know, we keep them serviced. We keep them top notch because we have to, we can't be down a day with them. So, Hopefully we'll get something together, whether it's in state or within a, I don't care where it is, but we need to put our trucks and trailers and people to work. Definitely, man. Well, look, I commend you. I'm glad that you've been putting the good thoughts out there and putting them to work and getting folks where they are staying in tip top shape as close as possible through all that we're going through with everybody on lockdown. So I commend you for doing that as a businessman and thinking outside the box. Look, let's dive in to a old saying in the automotive industry concerning motorsport. I want to hear from you whether it's true or not. That is, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. Does that live up? Is it true? You're bringing up the class that they have developed. It's been out for a little while, factory stock shootout. That is the whole goal for the Chevy Ford Dodge. Uh, it's the way it was always. You win on Sunday, sell on Monday. I, I definitely believe in that. Uh, it still needs to be, uh, it needs to be ran smooth. It needs to be shown. I mean, there's a lot of people that you've seen my Mustang up front in person. There's a lot of people that don't understand you can go buy one of those cars from a dealer. And if you want to race, take it straight out and race it. But you can also go buy you a new Mustang GT and use it as a daily driver. And there's not a big difference. It's still the same type of car. So, yeah, I, I believe that the big three are getting it. Uh, I appreciate them going in with these ventilators. And, I mean, I mean, look at Ford. They jumped right into it. Uh, Chevrolet's trying. I mean, it's, they're, they're all out. Again, our country is coming together. And to my knowledge, nobody's making them. I mean, they, they, they decided to do this on their own. So, we need the help, but uh, people don't forget that. I mean, a long, long time ago with Ford, when they had the bailout, Ford would not take that. I personally haven't forgot it. And and I get help from GM, don't get me wrong, with the Pro Stock car. But uh, they have all still sticks in my head. Ford didn't take it. Ford was here, and, and they put a lot of people to work right in our area here in Louisville. A lot of your heavy-duty trucks are made here, and it's uh, they're, they're a heck of a company. And, and family-owned, it's, it's, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, definitely. I'm a Ford guy, so, you know, when Ford is doing well, I definitely am glad that they are doing well. You mentioned the uh, factory stock class. You've got a great factory stock Mustang, and you mentioned to me once that a lot of people will gravitate towards it even over the pro stock car when you've got it sitting in the pits and they're next to each other. Talk to me about factory stock. What makes that class great, and why do you think fans are gravitating towards it? Well, they gravitate to it because maybe they drove that car there to watch us. I mean, so maybe they have a Ford Mustang or a Chevy Camaro or a Challenger. So that's that's one reason. But then you take the, the younger class that we need to get back into drag racing. Uh, they need to be showing up. We need them as fans. And 
they're all about blowers or about turbos or about boost. Well, we have that in these. I mean, there's no secrets to these engines. I mean, the whole secret is getting the little nine inch tire to go down the track. I mean, they make as much or more power than our pro stock motor, believe it or not. Now, it's not a cheap class. I mean, you will spend some money if you run them hard. So, but the whole goal of using one of these laptops to make a car get down the racetrack to where it was always before uh, you, when you had a digital timing or you had ratios or, or you use chips and I mean, a lot of stuff. Uh, now it's all done on a laptop. I mean, I know a lot of guys, like I even a couple races last year took my Willie bars off. Just, just, to, just to show you can make one of these cars win and be fast and not use a Willie bar. So that the young kids gravitate to that. Uh, another problem we have in the pro stock cars, yeah, we all know it's a Camaro, but it's, it's, it, it looks like a Camaro to me. And it even gets worse when it gets in the funny car. You know what I mean? You really don't know what you're looking at. There's no doubt that you can pull one of the three factory shootout cars on the starting line. You know what they are. So that, that's a big deal, but it's a fun class. It's still a new learning curve for everybody involved because this hasn't been out for 50 years. You know what I mean, it's the, the stock, stock cars have but the actual 14 to 1500 horsepower in a nine inch stock car hasn't been here. So it's a big challenge, it's fun. Uh, we'll have two of them out the rest of the year. Can't wait for that. And uh, it's, it's one to grow, but our, our main goal is just to get back racing. I don't care if it's a bracket level, eighth mile racing, whatever it is, we can't let our little tracks die. So we have to support them. We have to support the racers that go to them. And that's all I am. I'm a sportsman racer, I'm a bracket racer. When I'm finished with all this pro stuff, I'll be right back over here at Ohio Valley in Louisville, Kentucky on Saturday night, bracket race until 11 o'clock. Yeah, I, you have that sportsman background, and you know, I know you've worked your way up and you've won a pro stock championship in 2017, but you've definitely got that sportsman's heart. You've Even for the races that we have had this year, you've been in multiple classes. Look, where did it all begin? How did you get in racing? Where did it all start? Well, they, they did, they've done an article, and a lot of people that know me know it, but a lot of people don't know this. So it actually came from our car dealership. A guy came in and traded a 72 Nova in. I had never been to a racetrack in my life, drag race, ever. All I did was uh, we had a couple of show cars, old cars, and, and our car business. That's all I cared about. So we take a car in on trade, and my brother-in-law, which has passed away a few years back, uh, we take the car over to Ohio Valley, and I go on a Wednesday night, which is a test and tune, they have a grudge race deal or, or, or whatever, a bracket race. And <clears throat> the funny story is I pull up. I could always do burnouts because you know us in high school. We, we would race back and forth to home, do burnouts out in the parking lot, and get called into the principal's office. So anyway, I was like, this can't be that tough. So I go up there and do a burnout. And my first time staging, and I'm not ashamed to tell people, I stage up and window down and my radio on. So the starter comes over and, so my, my thing is, hey, dude, you can have the radio on all you want, but you need to roll your window up. So I had no clue. So actually, as that night went on with pure blind luck, I win that race. And I'm like, there's nothing to this. Well, it's just like it's just, just like a, a, a drug addict getting their first big high. You know what I mean? So then it goes from there to, hey, we need a transmission. Hey, I need a road cage. Hey, it just it never ends. And uh, – that's how it actually started, and that was back in 1994, 93, 94 range. And uh, it just moved on to different cars, different classes, building cars. Uh, had my own engine shop for a while, had my own dyno room. Uh, guy by the name of Bill Felker, which passed, old super stock racer. He worked for us full time just on our stuff. Uh, Jeff Taylor, which I know everybody knows. We actually moved him from North Carolina up here to Floyd's Knobs, Indiana, put him in a shop. Uh, he won a comp championship in our car in 05. I won the very next year in 06. So we have two championships right there out of the five years we raced. Uh, just went on and on. I met so many people, uh, but it's still a huge family. Everybody still comes back. Everybody's still on the phone, which is kind of cool. Good deal, man. Good deal. Well, look, you mentioned there, you know, giving a antidote of a – drug addict getting his first high. Look, could you talk to us briefly about your issues with alcohol? You've been sober for a, a long while. You know, what yes. was it for you that you dealt with and why did you make that turnaround to, you know, become sober? Well, I've, I've, been, I've been blessed and I've had a great life. Uh, racing was fun. It, it turned into a party. 
you're always gone. I uh, went through a stage. Uh, I was married at the time, had four children, and uh, just partying. And it was always available, if you know what I mean. Well, the, the drinking leads into other things in my life, which I did. I did other types of drugs. Uh, got pulled over a few times. Uh, went to uh, DUIs and uh, decided the last time that you know I probably to save my any relationship with the, with the kid I have, I need to probably get some help. So I don't know that I actually went into it 100% thinking I had a problem. So I make a phone call. I go away to a place called Talbot in Atlanta, south of Atlanta, right by the airport. And uh, I was there for actually 12 weeks. It took at least four weeks for them to convince me I had an issue. I was like, oh, this is just a money thing because they really, really, they build you up and they take you down. I mean, it's just every, everything you can imagine. I saw in there, uh, a lot of these WWE wrestlers you see on TV were in there with me. There's, Air, there's Delta airline pilots, there are doctors. So this doesn't discriminate. It's, it actually uh, goes after everyone. So I did learn and it guaranteed it saved my life and probably other people that I had influence on. So I uh, went through that whole program. I've been sober since 07. And still to this day, uh, I, put a, I put this whole story out and uh, Kevin McKenna did a good article on it. And that was a few years back, but you can read it. You can go back and look it up. And I'll tell you every step of what I went through. But today I've got two racers that call me that are going through it right now. So I, that keeps me sober. And uh, I, I try to help them with either getting put in a place or if they just need to talk because it's not easy. I mean, I still today can walk by. I, I used to love Crown Royal. I don't get sponsored by them. They don't give me nothing. But I used to love Crown Royal. And today I can walk through a liquor store or through a store. And when I walk past a big tank of Crown Royal, I taste it in my mouth. That's how, that's how bad it was. I was drinking a lot. But uh, I've got a good support team behind me. I've got uh, Randy Lynn that really holds me accountable. She's not scared to, to tell me how it is. And you have to have that. And I have to have people that I can probably help because it, it, it's, it's a big a big world again that we all work together. But yeah, it definitely changed my life. And my life now is beyond blessed because now I have my brain. I can think clearly. I'll tell you a quick story. I had this pro charger car I won the championship with in 06. I got out of rehab and I go test. Had Jeff Taylor, Daryl Heron, my whole crew. We go to St. Louis and I rent it. This is two weeks after I get out of rehab. I go out and this car runs 690s. I mean, it's fast, 200. I go out half track, shut off. Half track, shut off. And they're like, what in the world is, what's wrong? I said, this thing's a monster. It's, it's hard, it's all over the place. And they're like, no, it's as straight as it's ever been. And then I got thinking in my head, I haven't, I never raced drunk, but I haven't raced sober. I've never been in that car where you had clear thoughts or you know what's going on. So uh, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that are capable of drinking. They can go have fun. They can enjoy life. I'm not one of those guys because I never quit. It's, it's just, it was over the top. So, uh, but the way your mind thinks clear and even driving the finish line or hitting the tree or knowing what's going on there during that run, totally different in my eyes. Well, man, look, stay strong, and I'm glad you're on that journey of sobriety, and it's a good thing to hear, and I'm sure that it's had a great impact in the other people's lives as well. Look, another personal question before we dive into a few more specific pro stock questions. Sure. Look, you've got the phrase, Bo knows racing. Look, did you have to call Bo Jackson and ask for any rights or anything on that? Luckily, Nike owns, owned that, and the trademark went away because I learned all about trademarks from my good buddies of NHRA. So, so yeah, uh, no, I've not, not had any issues and it's catchy. I mean, people like it. I mean, it's, it's simple, but, uh, and, and it's, it's kind of the truth. I mean, I've devoted, uh, probably 75% of my life to racing every class, anything I get into or stuff I haven't got into yet. So, uh, yeah, anything, whether it's t-shirts, uh, I've tried it all. I mean, just tried it all with cars. I've actually financed a couple race cars of people or engines, just whatever it is to keep racing strong because it really is a great sport and it's such a family sport to keep everybody together. And we need more of that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad that there's no infringing going on and you know that as well. That's pretty cool. Yes. So with pro stock, you mentioned earlier, you know, people really gravitate to the factory stock because it looks like the car that it's, supposed to be because it is the car and right. the pro stock really has 
drifted away from looking like the factory car. They almost, in my opinion, look more like a pro mod without any supercharger or, or you know, cow induction or anything like that. Correct. What do you think it would take to get the pro stocks looking more stock? And as a driver, do you even want that? Well, I mean, the, the driver, of course, we want a driver wants to go faster. That's always. I don't care what if it's in a V stock automatic little Chevette or if it's in a top fuel car. It's really hard to ever slow a driver racer down in any class. So the first thing they should do, in my opinion, is they should have not got rid of the hood scoops. Pro stock always had a hood scoop. Very simple to find them. Now, some of your pro mods with nitrous, you'll see a hood scoop or the blower you'll stick out, but you can still tell the difference. So the hood scoop should have stayed. They could have used the same air, air induction if they wanted, uh, probably with two throttle bodies on top and the air coming in the scoop, we would probably run faster. So uh, that that would be a big help. As in, you know, the, the, the like Chevrolet, they make those bodies. They're all numbered, they're, they're carbon fiber bodies. So that's what they choose. Uh, luckily we have decals on them, so you know what they are. But uh, yeah, they, they could have went to that and I would love to see uh, a 10-5 tire, maybe no wheelie bar, maybe no crew guys setting the wheelie bar. I mean, just a whole different to where they're not just making laps. You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, they're, sometimes they're not the easiest to drive because once we hit third gear, I mean, you're kind of, we kind of have negative downforce where a fuel car or a funny car is just trying to push through the ground. Ours is the opposite. It, it will kind of float around and you know you're on a good run. If, if, the, if, the, if the back of the car is hanging up. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's more they could do, but we also need to make it more uh, challenging maybe or more fan friendly. I mean, they've got to want to stay after being up in, in, the sta in, the ta in the stands for an hour to two hours because of the oil downs of the fuel cars. A lot of times we'll pull out your first pair and you see people coming out of, out of the stands, which is disheartening to me because uh, most racers – love pro stock because it's just cutthroat. I mean, you're talking one and two foul a lot everywhere. So I get that from racers, but the fans need to know more about it. And I really believe NHRA should do more to push this. And you're also, you're going to get, you're going to get more sponsorship. Uh, and it, it's, it's just, it's a win-win for them. And people are tired of watching fuel cars up and down the track for two hours on a TV show. I mean, now show me John Force going home. Show me uh, Don Schumacher going to lunch. I mean, and, and having a meeting in, in in their shop with people. We don't need reporters. We need real life, and that that's what they need all the way around and on, on their whole TV deal to make this. And they're going to have to do something to step it up, or it's not going to be around. Yes, sir. I definitely agree. The fans are missing out when it comes to what the NHRA is currently putting out. Let's do a little bit of dreaming. What? Would you like to see? What do you think would increase the fan experience on the broadcast level and in the pits itself at an NHRA national event? Well, first of all, what we're doing here today, to me, is above and beyond anything you watch on TV. Because we can do this at any time. I can go back and watch this. Uh, I, I can do it on my time schedule. I don't have to be sitting at one time when we were on ESPN, 3 in the morning, sitting to watch an hour of NHRA racing. So... I brought this up to NHRA right right after they did the Fox deal. I went up and I, and I uh, had a meeting with a couple and I said, I just want to know, is Discovery Channel's producers uh, that much better than ours at Fox? And they're like, what are you talking about? I said, well, I don't know if, if you, I've got some friends from the Street Outlaw show. These guys are hardcore, uh, work all week on their car at night and go race to the weekend. That's how it started. Uh, but they're entertaining, but there's no difference in all of us, but they're not just showing cars going up and down the street. They're showing every part of, now some of it's stupid or staged. I mean, uh, the Asian and the guy in the truck and going around doing that stuff, public know that staged, but it's still entertainment to them. And, and it's huge. It's a huge draw. And the very words they got from me is, Bo, this is just a fad. Well, if it's a fad, it's been out probably 12 years now. So, and they've spun off another show off of it. And then they spin off a Memphis show off of it. So it, it's about characters, but it's also about being real and showing people at their house. I mean, people want to know people. People want, and it's worth bad to say, and they'll probably hate me for this, but people 
love stupid. You know what I mean? Or, or it, it's kind of something to laugh at, something funny. But I'm not, I, I don't disrespect any of those guys. And at one time, we were going to do four of them against four of us at the U.S. Nationals uh, in our so-called no prep cars against theirs. And the very words I told in HR is, if you do this at the U.S. Nationals, it'll be the biggest thing, the biggest draw for the week. So don't get your feelings hurt if people walk around John Force to go get something signed from uh, Joe Wood Dominator. You know what I mean? Because, you know, they put their stuff out there. And it's got to be the Discovery Channel. It's got to be the, the people putting it together. But this right here, and I've told NHRA this also, most everybody I know, my family, my friends, and our customers, they watch their uh, NHRA.TV because they can, again, go back and forth, try to see us, but they need to show all of it. They need to show all sportsmen, show everything show, for, the, for the whole week. Now, we started, and I helped out Warren Evans uh, to do the D3 TV, which now he's grown to do every division. And when we're at a national event and we can't be to where her family's racing, we're all in my lounge, Jason Lyon, look, watching his brother's race. We're all sitting there watching our family and friends race at a division race somewhere because that's what we want. That's what we want to see. Now, that's just cars going up and down the road. But there is a lot more that can be done with the Fox programming uh, and car cameras. But we need, we need life. We don't just need race cars. We need life. I definitely agree. We need to know more about the drivers, more about the crew members, more about the people who make yes. it happen at an NHRA national event. I mean, you know, God forbid that someone would wear, you know, T-Rex Halloween costumes that are so popular today on the starting line. You know, I mean, it's something silly, like you were saying. Well, or it's, it's what it's America loves, but I promise you, with between our crew guys – we have all the characters in the world you need for the best reality show in the world, hands down. You definitely do. There are a ton of characters out there. And then throw in those who, you know, they respect each other, but they really don't like each other and the rivalries that are out there. There's plenty to get out beyond the racing or that will, will amplify the racing that I don't think a lot of people are getting. Or, you know, I would like to see why not allow, you know, for example, going back to the World Door Slammer Nationals, you and Jeggy, even though even though round one didn't happen anyway like you were hoping it right. to, right. there was mention of a wager. Why not wager at a national event in qualifying or something? I mean, why not? I've, I've, I've did that two years – or the last year they had a K&N shootout in, in Vegas. I had to race Vincent Nobel first round. And I just came back from a uh, no-prep race. And if – you go up every time in a no prep race and they'll run you for $500. They don't care who you are. You know what I mean, because it's even, even battleground. I feel like pro stocks, even battleground. I said, Vincent, let's go for some money. Well, uh, we won't go for us. I, I don't care. So his dad and they're from New York and I love John, but of course, East coast mentality, we'll, we'll go for wherever you want. And I threw out some numbers and we ended up going for a thousand dollars. So Joe Costello's up there. And as they're interviewing us, I had told Joe about it. And I mean, people loved it. I mean, it was it was cool. Luckily, I beat him. It was it was cool to do. But Alex and I did it one run down there in qualifying for five hundred bucks. And it was and then I had the big grudge race with Dave Cramner for the shootout car, which was twenty five grand. So, but I'm telling you, uh, me personally, if you tell me somebody's going up there to run for twenty thousand dollars, I'm going to get up to that fence. I'm going to watch it somehow because I want to know who who won that. And, and what the race was like. So, yeah, they need more of that uh, call outs. I was hoping we could do some call outs right there because I actually would have called Jag out because he had the fastest car. That's just like our buddy, our strut master teammate, Dan Fletcher. If you have to run that guy, you want him first round. You don't want these guys getting on a row. And it's always been that way. So, yeah, I'd have called him out and put a, put a wager. I mean, that's the stuff. That's what you call entertainment. Uh, it, yeah, you're, one's going to win, one's going to lose. But in reality, if we get more fans coming to us, we're all going to win. We're all going to win when more fans are out there for the show. Speaking right. of shows, look, juxtaposed for me, the NHRA national event, what Wes Buck put on with the World Board Slammer Nationals presented by CTEC Manufacturing. What did you think of that event? For them to throw that thing together in about 80 days, Wes tells me, 
uh, it was it was fun. It was a uh, it was a it was a good show. Uh, I think if they have it again, they'll change a few things. But I think it will be one of the biggest races that will happen. I am personally trying to talk them in. I love bracket racing. That's not a bracket race, if you know what I mean. So we have so many stock eliminator and super stock style guys in the country that are begging NHRA to get in national events. Well, guess what? NHRA cuts them off at 60. But you go to U.S. Nationals, they don't cut them off. You have 150 cars there in one class. So I told Wes, let's put a good money super stock stock race. Uh, let's, let's let them run because those are they're good cars. They're not junk. They're, they're beautiful. And those guys work every bit as hard or harder than we do. And you still have the old school guys in there that people do know. You do have Dan Fletcher. I mean, you, you put up a five to $10,000 super stock race, Dan Fletcher's going to be the first one there. You know what I mean, you're going to get people, uh, Jimmy DeFrank, Justin Lamb, they're going to travel from the West Coast because they have to win five national events these days to win that much money. So uh, do it all and then give them a trophy because everybody, and I'm one of them, I got a whole garage full of class trophies to where you win, you beat somebody in the same class as you. That's as close to pro stock as most of those racers will ever be in their life. So that's cool. Uh, but I think that will grow. We had a good time. Uh, of course, it was beautiful in Orlando. It's, it's, it's in Florida, but uh, we need more of that stuff. And NHRA was paying a lot of attention to that race, I've been told. So uh, they even had a couple, let a couple of their guys come take our cars. So uh, it, you know, like I say, we're one big family, but that race should grow and I think uh, Chip was helping in that. Chip was a big part. Had signage everywhere. Uh, was there, and uh, I think he enjoyed it. So it sucks for me because we had a, of all things, one of the new safety features on our pro stock car, is having enough air pressure for your chute to work. Well, my gauge read right, but what will happen is it won't let the ignition work if it's under 800 psi. So I get it, it'll turn over. Try it, you thinking something is just turning, 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 and and then come to find out, we had like 500 psi in. My gauge was stuck at 900. So that's why my car didn't start. And man, I really felt like we found some stuff right before that round that would give Jake a really good race. And Jake and I grew up. I mean, he's he's in Columbus, Ohio. I'm down here by Louisville, Kentucky. We grew up racing each other in every type of car in the world. So I love racing stuff like that. Uh, there's really no pressure. There was big money on the line, uh, but it was fun. I mean, if you, you were there, if you watched, people would have stayed up till 2 o'clock in the morning as long as we kept making runs. And, and the starting line just kept getting busier and busier. I mean, even us, we would be done. We'd shoot up real quick, go on the starting line and watch Pro Mod. But it's just a fun, fun deal. Now, who knows what's going to happen with this social distancing from now on. This could really change everything we've ever seen in drag racing. But we've got to make it work. But it's great. Yeah, the World Door Slam of Nationals was great. You came out $25,000 richer. I've got to ask, how did it go from a best two out of three down to a one-pass <laughs> shootout in well, those fat and stock cars? It was no secret. I was having issues with my car, and I was waiting on some parts. Uh, I, I shipped a set of tires and wheels uh, from home to there overnight on Saturday. That cost me $1,000 just to get them there. But uh, we were having some issues, and... Dave, uh, I think we had just lost. He lost first round, too. He's like, hey, I want to get out of here. Because Dave's a, a strong businessman with American ethanol. He, he, I mean, he's hands-on. He, he'll fly out su Sunday night. He'll fly in Friday afternoon right before a lot of races. So uh, he's like, listen, we'll do one or none. I got to go. So I'm like, you know, this is not the smartest decision in my life. I have not really made a hit down this track. But I was there a month ago running, running, running. So go back to the basics. And I was like, okay, whatever, we'll do it. And uh, Joe Costello came out, talked to us before we were in our cars, did a little bit of smack talking, which is, we need that again. And uh, yeah, we, you we, got called a used car salesman. And I guarantee I am, and I'm proud of it. I'll never forget, man, don't forget it. So yeah, that was a, that was a fun race. We will uh, never forget it. And not only does he owe me the, he owed me the 25,000, he owes me and my crew dinner anywhere I want. There's no price cap. So I don't know. I mean, I might have to rent a jet or something and go somewhere far, far away. Who knows? But uh, Dave's a great guy. He loves the factory shootout cars. That man spends a lot of money. I mean, he, he will continue. But, again, 
you can't let these classes die. And we had to support them. We had to support uh, the bracket racing. Just everything has to be supported. But our local tracks had to be supported. I'm telling you, I'm stressing that so people know, hey, when all this is over and, and you, you just wonder about a record bracket race, you'll go to your local track and see some really cool cars and, and meet some cool people. So uh, when he calls and says, hey, dinner is served, remember, I work for Strut Masters, too. So you're, let me come along for the ride. You're, 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 I didn't say how many crews, so you're invited, Chip's invited. We might even be Brian. If we put a muzzle on him, we'll bring him. <laughs> All right, Bo, we're looking forward to dinner then. Now, look, you've been talking about the local tracks. I love going to the local tracks. My local one that I'm at here currently in the upwestern New York is Lancaster Dragway, New York International yep. Raceway Park. Look. Do you think this year might be a year that the tracks that are local tracks with smart promoters that they could possibly come out with a winning year because big time racing is going to have so many challenges actually getting out and running? Well, for one thing, they need to get their local program going. I mean, they need to get it going now. I mean, everybody's usually open right now, 1st of April. March is a lot of testing. So, yeah, they, they depend on that. But, I mean, these little tracks, I mean, there's no – I looked at a couple of tracks and own them. There's no money to be made. I mean, unless you have uh, a, a other gimmick or a campground, a friend of mine owns Beach Bend Park. Well, he has an amusement park built on it. He has a campground. So, but the actual racetrack itself, it's tough. I mean, you get it weather. I mean, the downtime, uh, you still have to draw fans in. Years ago, they would bring uh, match races and that's what they probably should start doing. I mean, if you're not going to see us at, on an NHRA level much, call us up. We'll get four of us together. Let's come do a match race. And uh, the right promoters will make it. The people that just sit around and complain, waiting for things to happen, they're not going to make it. So you're, they're going to have to do whatever they can, uh, whether it's to raise their purse or uh, start earlier or, or get, I mean, just whatever, whatever it takes. But the main thing is to get your crowd there to be able to see what's happening and get to go back there and walk right by the cars, meet the people. A lot of people don't even know that happens. Like I have a lot of people, even at an MHRA track, can I get a pit pass? I said, yeah, as soon as you walk in the gate, you have a pit pass. So that's, uh, that's what needs to be told and showed more. If they would show it more in Fox, people would know it. You have to tell them nothing. Sounds like I have dogs attacking me. Yeah, okay. We're good. All right. All right, Bo. So let's talk back on and look at Pro Stock. Uh, your Pomona, well, that was not so great outside of qualifying, losing round one. Phoenix, man, you lucked all the way to the finals and almost got a Wally there in Phoenix. You literally went from, like, last in points to number five in points. And this year, we don't have the countdown. It's yes. going to be a year of consistency once we get back out there and we race. So are you looking forward to that, that it's going to be on a consistency level and not just make it to this point and then re, re, you know, restack everything? Yes. Uh, if you look back at my pro stock career, we've been very consistent. I mean, usually we'll start out cold, in strong or start strong in, in, in code or somewhere in between. So this year, just to go, you don't have to win every race. You have to go rounds. Pomona was a nightmare. Phoenix was really a nightmare. Hey, I'm, I'll be busy. I'll be right there. I got, I'm being, I'm being summoned. So she understand. Okay. But anyway, we have all that, uh, blew a motor up in Phoenix, which is very costly to our KB team and Kim Black. I hate that. I mean, I understand what it costs because I own my own stuff and I know. Uh, but looked our way every single round. And knowing I have Eric in the final, they're very fast. They've worked really hard. And they've got some good stuff this year. But I do know with this much time off, with Greg Anderson and Jason Lyne sitting at home, sitting at the shop, they are working on our stuff. So there's no doubt we'll be back and be strong. But, yeah, I kind of like – the countdown kind of – it's great if you start out in 10th because your points start over. But when you – like two years, I started out first. One year I had such a lead. I mean, all I had to do was kind of show up the rest of the season to win. Well, they start back over. So, uh, I've never really agreed with it. I mean, uh, it's made for people that go and attend, but you have to do well all year long. 
So it's almost like the first part of the season don't really matter if you're in top 10. So I think this year will be different. It'll be cool. I'm glad we're in fifth and not 15th. That's hard to come up come up that rank because who knows actually when we're going to be back on the track. So are we going to have 16 races or are we going to have MD and seven? You know what I mean? So you, nobody knows that answer. Uh, our main goal is that we do make it back. And, and uh, the winning races and the points will be a bonus just to get back everybody, get them out there, know we're in a safe place and having the fans. I don't want to go if fans can't come up. And, I mean, they told us in games, you know, hey, try to stay distance from fans. I mean, that's not us. We've never done that. I mean, I can't tell a guy, hey, dude, you're too close. That's not me. Now, there's some guys that probably like it because they're not people, people persons. But, uh, no, I, I believe we don't need to do it unless we can do it right. Yes, sir, definitely. And I'm looking forward to seeing this year's championship run whenever it does happen. I think it will definitely put a spotlight on really the best racers in every class and the best teams in every class here in 2020. So, Bo, look, we know you're being summoned. So, Bo, when we do get back to racing, you know, what do you feel like fan interaction will be like? What are your expectations? Well, first and foremost, we have to be safe, of course, but we need the fan interaction. I'm not going to tell a guy, hey, you're too close, or hey, I'm not going to sign this hero card or a shirt that you might have bought. I mean, that's not the way that, that this program works. I mean, we have to have the fan interaction. We want them by our cars. We want them at our trailers. So when they ask questions, you, you answer them. I mean, so this whole deal of uh, six feet apart or whatever, it's not going to work when you have 10 people lined up that, that might want your autograph. And you that's what makes NHRA work. I mean, it makes people come to the track. It makes uh, Chip want to sponsor Bo Butner. I mean, we have to be able to talk to the fans and uh, that's that drag racing. That part won't change. And if it does, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people not interested. That will certainly be the case. And, you know, drag racing has been built on for a long time that every ticket is a pit pass and you're practically guaranteed interaction with the stars of NHRA drag racing. Well, but look, we know you're being summoned for supper. Look, let me give you the last word, as I've been doing regularly with drivers, last word to your fans, partners, and also your competitors. Yes. First of all, Chip, I hope you're getting well. I know you went through you went through the surgery. You text me. You're telling me you're up and walking. That's great. Keep it up. We need you out here. Uh, for all of our fans, we appreciate you. Uh, would not be here without you, uh, especially at this level. But uh, let's, let's stay positive about this whole deal we're doing. Racing will be back. Uh, we're all going to be talking like this. But keep your family right there with you. Stay healthy. Do what you're being told for a while and, until we just can't take it anymore. But we have to to get through this. Uh, my competitors, I hope you're working on your stuff because I know my team uh, is working. And uh, it's, it's going to be it's going to be great. It's going to be a fun rest of the season. But uh, – my main goal is just everybody be safe and be smart. And uh, I've never washed my hands so much in my life. I mean, if I get a cough or a, or a sneeze or something, I'm like, oh, my goodness. So whatever the media has done to Bo Butner, I'm sure it's affected them also. So maybe not watch it as much. I don't miss this guy behind me. When he talks, I listen because I believe in this guy. He's my president. So let's, uh, let's help him win in November also. That's my goal because if these other idiots win, there might not ever be racing. Just remember that. Thank you, Bo. Drag racing fan, I'm Lee Kraft, the Monday morning racer for Bo Butner for President Trump as well. Thank you for watching Drag Racing TV, all brought to you by strutmasters.com. Till next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.